uh, good morning, Common Ground. Uh, and the choir uh, sang a song. It's always an orchestra. I really appreciate it every single Sunday, and thank you for your dedication, great worship song and uh, music. And without love, nothing, right? So why don't we greet one another, at least three people around you. God loves you, okay? Let's do that. God loves you. And uh, the lastly, but not, not the least, but then would you point at yourself that God loves me? Would you do that three times? God loves me. Amen. All right. And God loves you. But then do you remember what I preached about a couple of weeks ago? I'm glad you don't remember. So I can recycle and recycle again and again and again. I'm just kidding. I preach the Mark chapter 1. As you know, book of Mark is the second book in the New Testament. First book is from the New Testament is what? Matthew, Mark, and Luke. This is synoptic gospel. The Mark, Matthew, and Luke, a Greek word synoptic, seen together. So some of the most, the same account, sometimes is other time is like a, orders the same, the same incident, right? A miracle happened and all that, but just a little bit different angle. But then they see the count, account together. Say that's why we said synoptic, seen together. So if you look at the Bible in chapter 1, verse 1, that God opened the door with this statement. Mark chapter 1, verse 1, ESV. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The Mark doesn't talk about, okay, let's find out who Jesus is. No. Bottom line up front, blah. The beginning of the gospel story about Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Savior, his Son of God. It talks about Verse 2 and 3, Malachi, Isaiah. It's the last book of, you know, the New Testament, uh, Old Testament, from Malachi to the New Testament time. It's silence for 400 years. But now, book of Mark talks about who Jesus is. He is the Son of God. He sent one and only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for you and me. Whether you realize it or not, I want you to remember this one thing, never change. God loves you. Newlywed couple, Robert, tell you I bless you. Your marriage, but you will fight. You will argue. I want to win. Don't call me. Call your own chaplain. And we just ups and down. But you know what? God is with us. We, we are in the house of God, amen? You are in God's hands. And he talks about Isaiah, Malachi, the coming of Jesus Christ, John the Baptist, who is going to prepare the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to come. And you know what? In the Mark chapter 1, verse 9 through you know, 12, 11, John the Baptist, Jesus all the way from the Galilee came down to baptize by who? Jesus came down to baptize by John the Baptist. Remember, when he went into the water, the baptism took place. 
would immerse into the water as he came out of water. Remember? The heaven is being torn open. A Greek word, schizo, split, split. No one can. Bottom line up front, he opened up. I want you to believe Jesus Christ, he's the son of God and Messiah who saved your life. Jesus was and he will be, amen? And being torn, split, schizo in Greek, not a bottom to top, from top to bottom. Mark chapter 15, when Jesus breathed lastly, at last, the curtain of the temple split, schizo, same word, torn, not the bottom to top, but top to bottom. You know what? No one can, only God. He opened up. Come to him. Regardless of your background, your rank, your experience, education, how much money do you have or not, come to me. Accept him. Accept me as your Lord and Savior. But remember, and I want to remember this statement as well, as it came out, Heaven is being torn open wide. A voice came down from above. You are my son. You are my daughter. With you, I am well pleased. You are my precious child. With you, whom I am pleased. Man, I want to hear that every single day, every single moment, every step I take. And Jesus was laid led by the Holy Spirit to the wilderness. Later on, prior to our text today, John the Baptist captured in prison. But he says, let me see the today text. Verse 15, chapter 1, verse 15. It says, the time is come. Time has come, okay. In Greek, time is too big, the way of saying the time. Chronicle, chronos. It's been three weeks mark already from year 2024, right? From day one, January 1st, 2024, all, all the way today is 21st of January. Three weeks is chronos, chronicle, duration of three weeks. But the time has come, which means today. Kairos, now, out of 24 hours today, 1,100, all the way down to 1,200. Today, time has come. What kind of time do you have? I was, like, impressed. One family member how many of you guys have a 2024 New Year resolution? How many of you guys have that? Maybe you forgot. You just wait till next year, right? But then I heard, I request this family member. You know, as you know, chaplain, 100% confidentiality. When I heard this, their families, 24, uh, 2024 New Year resolution, I asked them, can I share your resolution with our congregation? Kind of small, that's good. I erased some part. It says, matter of fact, this family 
one of their children, child, one of the children is West Point cadet. He called the family. Hey, mom and dad, my sibling come together. Let's have 20 to 24 year, year, year resolution. The funny thing is, he's a West Point cadet student there. He's brilliant. He just used CAC, a digital sign at the end. And they asked the family member to do this. No electronic device, 2200 to 0500. Read the Bible, a chapter of the Bible every day. And this might apply to me too. Uh, reduce body fat, one of the family members. And all these things, and wow. And do the push-up and all that, GPA and all that. The time has come. Three weeks later, I'm going to ask this family again, how you doing? You call. I still follow and know what is your memo says, what this resolution says. My title, Wowie. I cannot get away with a wow. I don't know how I can survive with this title, wow. But I came up with the wow in me. Today's chapter 1, verse 16 says, As Jesus walks, walked beside the Son of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and the brother, uh, his brother Andrew casting a net into a lake. For they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once, they left their nets and followed him. My first point is this. Wowing number one is calling. The remember when God called you. It's not an option. It's not a choice. In Greek mood, it says imperative. You've got to do it. In order. Come, follow me. I'll send out you to fish for people. What would you do if I asked each of you this morning that you be a chaplain? You follow me. Drop your, what you do, your rank and what the MOS, you be a chaplain. If you refuse to accept my Suggestion, after service, no donkey donut, no coffee, after. You might say, whatever, I'm going to skip it. I'm not going to take it. I'll do my own. Jesus is not trying to say, drop everything you have. What are you doing? Let's say he was a mechanic. Simon, Peter, and Andrew are mechanic. Hey, come follow me. I will send out you two people to fix their car, fix their lives. He's asking, call his disciples, change to from the you know, purpose of your life for your own good, for your family. You're fishing, you're, you're fishing for people, for your own your family to support. You know what? Do the same concept, catching fish, just like catching people for their own salvation life. He's calling you to follow to his great mission together. It's not an option, it's an order. And I'm Uncle Duty Chaplain 24 7 since the last Wednesday until this coming Wednesday. I pray, God, nobody calls during the Saturday. Somebody did. I was about to prepare, take a sh should I take a shower now? Or I just tossed back and forth around 4.30 in the morning. Somebody call me later. Hey, chaplain, would you come down, please? Or so I said. 
By the way, our commander here, don't worry about sir, it's not us, sorry. Our actually, don't worry about sir. Our brigade chaplain, don't worry, it's not one of us. I rush into it. The soldier, it's okay now. My phone is 24-7. Uncle Duty Chaplain phone is right next to me. I take it. And those during seven weeks, seven days. The calling. I want to remember, God called you. If you God calls you, I want you to follow the calling. What you can do with that calling. Not only Peter and Simon, Peter and his brother Andrew, but if you look at verse 20 and 19 and 20, also James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, also God called him. If you don't have a calling, I want you to remember and ask this question, Lord, what should I do for a living? For your kingdom, would you guide me through this? You know what? He will answer your prayer. He will guide you through every step that you will take. Same way. If you look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 and 29. And next slide, please. Uh, Next slide. Oh, yeah. Come back. Yeah, the the previous one. Yeah. Not the previous one. And the come. Follow me, verse 17. I will send you out to fish for people. Now, for the calling wise, Jesus is subsequent expert on calling, then higher calling. When he calls you to follow him, he will provide whatever you need. He will direct and guide where to go and what to do. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 26, 29, it says, The mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to the saints, to all of you, to them, all of you, God, chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in me, the hope of glory. We sang, shine, Jesus, shine on me. The Jesus within you. Make it shine. Let this Jesus, the hope of glory within your life, your mind, your whatever you do, whatever you say, let overflow. Reach out to people around you. Impact. Whatever you say, whatever you do, let them know the Jesus within you. It's not your or my own power and energy. Colossians chapter 1, verse 28, it goes again. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom. We may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, toil, struggling with all his energy that properly works within me. Jesus is the source. If he calls you, that he's going to provide. Amen. Let's look at the Psalm, chapter 23, verse 1 through 3. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I want you to know who is the subject matter expert on calling. Look at that, verse 2. He, the Lord God Jesus, makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside green still waters. He's the one. If God calls you, you respond to his calling, higher calling, that he will guide you through. He leads me beside the still water, and he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I'm not standing here for my own good, my name's sake. All we do, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Amen. God called you. God will lead. Then how? Called you. My second point is, why number one is calling. Why number two is 
following. Verse 18, at once they left their nets and followed him. Verse 20, same thing. Not only Peter, Simon Peter and Andrew, but John and James, son of Zebedee. They did the same thing, verse 20. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired man and followed him. Follow how? Verse 21, 22. They went to the Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Teach. Synagogue. Teach people. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Three ministry of Jesus Christ. Teaching, preaching, healing. God called you to how to follow with the teaching and preaching, proclaiming, and healing. And if you look at I just synoptic gospel, Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 through 22, it, same account when Jesus called his disciples for the first time. Peter, Simon Peter, and his brother Andrew, and the James and John, son of Zebedee. Same thing. But after that, Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, these three ministry of Jesus Christ, teaching, proclaiming, preaching, and healing. And that, after he called his disciples, he went in, he taught a synagogue, one person with the unclean, impure, impure spirit possessed by demons. Be silent and come out of him. He rebuked the devil, the power of darkness. And later on, Mark chapter 1, verse 29 through 31, they walk into Peter's mother-in-law. He was lying down with a high fever. Jesus came up to him, hey, come. Man, stand up. As he hands out, just like, you know, lift her up, her fever is gone. The healing and teaching proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. In the Mark chapter 30, 32, verse 34, that evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick, and oppressed by demons. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. He healed many who were sick and various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit them demons to speak because they knew him. When God called you, when he calls you to your high calling, whatever you do, use your profession, your job, your MOS, to follow higher calling with these three main preaching and teaching and healing. Whenever you sit down and drink and do, do things with, around your better buddies, your friends around you, let them know. Shine, Jesus, shine. The hope of glory within you. If you don't have your struggle, come, seek us. Ask what's happening. Your elders, ushers here, we pray for your support. For you to overcome, get over. Remember, God loves you, called you, and followed. The healing power of Jesus Christ will go out to you. Wowing number three, knowing who he is. Go back to chapter 1, verse 23 and 24. And immediately, there was in the, their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, 
Jesus of Nazareth, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Come on ground, church, hear me out. Unclean spirit even acknowledge who Jesus is as Holy One, Son of God. What about you? Who died on the cross. Jesus was and is, will be forevermore for everlasting life. Calling, following, and knowing who Jesus is. This time I'm going to invite orchestra. Scott, can you say? Let's be a blessing to people around us. We're going to sing the title song of the end song, The Blessing. In the Old Testament, Book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 22 to 27. God said to Moses, Hey, Moses, tell priest Aaron and his son, this is how you to bless the Israelites, believers, saints, and on and on and on. As we close this morning, we all stand together. Let's sing this song, the blessing together. And beside you, and all around you, he is with you, he is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, in your going, in your weeping, in your rejoicing, he is with you, 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 he is with you.
blessing and receive God's blessing and share around you.